What's up? What's going on, guys? This is Mr. Gold, and I am back today with NFL Free Agency Recap Part 5. I know, and as you guys can see, according to the screen, it has been two weeks since the last Free Agency Recap, but and I've only done one video in between that, but we are back. NFL Free Agency Recap Part 5. And if you want to know why I haven't recently been doing a lot of videos, it's because I've been in other people's videos. I think I've been in the past three Pineapple Gaming videos and all of that. But I should be making another Roblox-themed video tonight. But for right now, just figured I'd get an NFL free and she recap out for you guys. A few more moves have happened since then, but not many, so... And let me know down in the comments who your favorite team is and who they drafted and what you guys think of that. Like, go ahead and, like, give me, like, a grade like I do for NFL Free Agency Recap. Give me a grade of your team's draft pick. And I will go ahead and respond to those comments. But let's get into it. We ended with the Los Angeles Chargers, and now we're going to be moving on to the Los Angeles Rams. So, first off, we have the... Let's see here. We have Austin Blythe, an offensive lineman, agreed to a one-year $3.9 million deal that includes $3.5 fully guaranteed. So that's a lot of guaranteed money there, only $400,000 not guaranteed. So if he doesn't work out, they're still going to be paying him $3.5 million. But they could use a little line help, but they did trade. Well, I guess we'll get to that later, but yeah, it's a pretty solid deal there. Uh, no, I guess, no, never mind, no, they did not trade for him. I was going to say they traded for Russell Koyung, but that's the Chargers. Uh, no, they traded Russell Koyung for Tri Tanner, but that's the Chargers. This is the Rams. I think they, uh, they need a little line help, but they're pretty solid. But the Rams are pretty much a dumpster fire, this free agency, because they have no money. But they did end up signing Michael Brockers after a deal with the Ravens fell through. He signed a three-year contract that has a maximum value of $31.5 million. So basically, what happened here is they, he was going to sign with the Ravens, and the Ravens are already doing very good on the defensive line, so this would have helped them a lot. But he was going to, and then the deal fell through, and he came back to the Rams on a three-year deal. I'm going to go ahead and give that one a B plus, even though it wasn't intended. It's still a good deal, and you're still getting a good player. Then, next we have Leonard Floyd, the former Chicago Bear, signed a one-year, $10 million deal that could be worth up to fully guaranteed, all of it's guaranteed, that could be up worth up to $13.5 million with incentives. So, that's a pretty good deal there, one year. You're getting a solid player, just no room for him now that Danny Trevathan and Robert Quinn went to the Bears. So, solid deal, I'll give that one a B. He's a little bit on the older side, but he should be good. Then, Ashawn Robinson, I believe the former Lion, got signed by the Rams on a two-year, $17 million deal. I think this is probably a good move. He'll pair along with Aaron Donald. I'll go ahead and give that one a B as well. Then, Andrew Whitworth re-signed to a three-year, $30 million contract. It includes $12.5 million guaranteed. It has a max value of $37.5 million. This is a good deal in the fact that they bring back a... Uh, Long time ish member, but I don't even know if he'll be in the league for three more years. So it's a high pay, but he's a good player, so it'll work. Then we'll move on. Oh, yes, did I grade that? No, I didn't. B minus. Miami Dolphins is who we're moving on to right now. First move is Adrian Colbert, sign, re signed to a one year, $1.775 million contract with the Dolphins. That's pretty solid. They got some safety help after losing Minka Fitzpatrick. I mean, I guess they kept safety help after losing Minka Fitzpatrick and Rashad Jones in free agency. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and give that one a... No, I'll give it a C plus since he's not the best, but it's still solid. Then Eric Flowers, the former Giant, signed a three-year $30 million with the Dolphins that includes $19.95 million guaranteed. So over half of the deal is fully guaranteed. But I don't know how really solid he was with the Giants. He was solid enough that, considering that he's getting paid the same money as Andrew Whitworth, I don't know, but I'll give it a B. Then Kamu Grugier Hill signed a deal with the Dolphins. That's all I have on that one. 
I'll give it a C because that's not really an impact move there. Then Jordan Howard signed a two-year, $10 million contract. And we're going to see here that they pretty much just stacked up on uh, running backs, both in the draft, free and CVI trade. They went running back heavy ever since losing Kenyon Drake and only having Kalen Ballage on their lineup. So, like, I guess this makes sense. Not, like, that pretty much is going to... Like, he's a solid player, and I feel like he was really good with the Bears. And then, he, and then he kind of fell off when he went to the Eagles. And then now he'll be on the Dolphins. I don't know how much of a starting role he's going to get with the other two players on the Dolphins being there. But that should be remotely solid. And they're not paying him overly, but they're getting two years worth out of him. So I'll go ahead and give that one probably like... Mm, I'll give that one a B. Then Byron Jones signed a five-year, $82 million contract that includes $54.5 million guaranteed. That is too much money for him. Did he, like, one interception last season? I know he's a good pass defender, but that's too much. He shouldn't be the highest paid. That should have been, like, uh, like maybe a Richard Sherman kind of pay. No, he should not be the highest paid corner in the league. I give that one a D. That's just too much money. I know he's solid, but that's too much money. Then... Ted Karras, an offensive lineman, signed a one-year, $4 million contract. This, I believe he's the former Patriot center, is a pretty good player, and he should be make an impact on the Dolphins team that could use some line help. As we saw, they already signed, uh, what's his name, Eric Flowers, but this is the last offensive line move that they will make in free agency so far. So I'll go ahead and give that one a B-. minus. Then Shock Lawson, the former Buffalo Bill, signed a three-year, $30 million contract with the Dolphins. So, Shock Lawson, very solid player. I like this move. I'll give it actually an A- minus right here. I, I like that move. And Emmanuel Ogba signed a two-year, $15 million contract that includes $7.5 million fully guaranteed. So, basically what happens here is they give him half guaranteed, half non-guaranteed, and yeah, that pretty much just works out for them, both sides. Emmanuel Ogba's not bad. I believe he's a former Brown. And yeah, the edge rusher should help them get some sacks on their team. I'll give it a B+. Then Elandon Roberts, I believe another former Patriot, signed with the Dolphins. That's all I've got on that. I'll give it a C+. It's okay. Then Kyle Van Noy, another former Patriot, signed a four-year $51 million deal that includes $30 million guaranteed. That's a lot of money right there. Might be a little bit too much, in my opinion, but that's still an okay deal, and he's a good player, so I'll give it a B. Then, what I think will end up being our last team for the day is the Minnesota Vikings, and their first signing is Amir Abdullah, re-signed with them, and he's a good backup running back, I guess, to uh, with him and, what's his name, Madison, or, yeah, on, Deon, Andre Madison, or, whatever his name is, him and Madison and him, or whatever his name is, will duo to back up Dalvin Cook. That should be good. I'll give that one a B. Then Dan Bailey re-signed to a three-year, $10 million contract that pays $4.25 million in year one and has a max value of $12 million with field goal percentage incentives. So, he's a solid kicker. Kicker's... They're kind of, like, sometimes they're a little bit, I feel like, underrated. But you do need a good kicker for your team. They kick usually at least once a game. Definitely a good deal. I'll give that one an A because Dan Bailey played particularly well for them. Then, fullback CJ Ham re-signed with the Vikings on a four-year, $12.25 million deal. This is very expensive for a fullback, but he was the best fullback in the NFL last season. And he weighed it to the Pro Bowl. So... I'm going to go ahead and give that one a nice little B-plus there. Very good deal, even though it is a lot of money. Then Anthony Harris got the franchise tag. I honestly thought this dude was hitting free agency, but he did not. They placed the franchise tag on him. Don't rule him out as a trade partner, but B, because you'll still get some value out of him. And then Rashad Hill agreed to terms with the Vikings. That's all I got. I'll give that a C-. minus. It's not really an impact move there. Sean Mannion... Resigned with Minnesota, so there's their backup quarterback, I guess. I don't have any details on that, 
B minus because I guess it's a good backup. Then Michael Pierce, the former Raven, agreed to terms with the Vikings on a three year deal with a max value of twenty eight million. He will receive eighteen million guaranteed. The guaranteed money is always good, and he's getting a little bit over half of it. So, um, Michael Pierce could definitely be a weapon, but the Vikings lost a lot of players this year, like a lot of them. But Michael Pierce will help fill that gap as that Everson Griffin has left. Then Tajay Sharp, a wide receiver, signed a one-year deal worth with a max value uh, a one-year deal worth one million dollars that has a max value of one point five million and includes six hundred and seventy-five thousand guaranteed. So this is a pretty solid deal here. Former Titan I thought was gonna be really good when he first started out. He didn't end up being quite that good, but he's pretty solid. And then linebacker, and I'll give that one a B. And then Eric Wilson, they got a second round tender on him, so he won't be going anywhere this year unless it's VIA trade. So I'll give that one a B as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I'll be able to come out uh, with another one of these very quickly and not take two weeks this time. But I'll tell you what, these videos sure do run me out of breath. It's constant talking. I don't know how talk show hosts do it, but very good job by them. Uh, yeah, but we'll just go ahead and leave you off with that. Let me know also along with your team's draft pick that you're most... I'll go ahead and do first round draft pick there. What's your first... And I'll go ahead and start it off. Uh, Jordan Brooks was the Seahawks' first round draft pick. And I'm, I give that one like a B-. minus. He could be solid. Watch some footage on him. He looks like he could be pretty good. So, but I don't necessarily think it was the right hole to fill, but I think it was a hole to fill. So, very good move, a pretty good move there. And you guys leave your first round, your team's first round selection and your grade. And if you want an explanation, and if you want to, you can leave an explanation for that grade all in the comments there. And also... If one of your teams got mentioned in this video, let me know which free agents you are most excited signing with your team and which free agents you're most sad to leave or not sign with your team. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, Mr. Gold.